I got my first job as a software engineer by replying to a post on Twitter. I don't have a CS degree. I didn't graduate from a boot camp. I didn't do an internship. I didn't have any work experience, but somehow I got hired to be a full-time software engineer. And I'm gonna tell you how I did that. It's not very busy today. I'm the only person here. Yeah, just to let you know, I will be kind of getting up and checking. It looks like I'm moving around a lot. I just wanna make sure I'm not bothering people. Number one, establishing a line of communication with someone on the team that you would be working on. How I got my job was through a Twitter post. It was a Twitter post that my wife saw of a friend of her friend. He was like, hey, my company that I'm working for is growing and we need more developers. If you know anyone who's experienced, tell them to contact me. Even if they don't have experience, we can train them. That guy happened to be the lead engineer for the company I'm now working for. Maybe I got lucky with that Twitter post, but the point is tell everyone you know, every single person you know, friends and family, they need to know that you're looking to become a developer because you you don't know who's going to have an opportunity for you. You need to check everywhere, all social media, LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, whatever, and don't waste your time doing the quick applies on LinkedIn or whatever. If you see jobs like on Indeed or LinkedIn where there's like 200 people applying, just don't waste your time if you see a job you're interested in like that maybe you can find some people who are on that team on LinkedIn and send some direct messages to them and just establish that lines of communication maybe even tell them if they're in the same area as you maybe see if you could talk one of them into meeting up with you in person and be like hey can I buy you a coffee so we can talk about code or talk about your company or talk about the industry or hey I've got this cool project I'm working on can I buy you a coffee and we can talk about it whatever you have to do to get that foot in the door I mean for me like we didn't know the person directly and I stepped over all that whole line of people who just submitted their applications and went directly to the lead engineer and the CEO slash owner founder of the company yeah don't waste your time applying to random jobs. Uh, I would only apply to a job that you are in contact with someone in the company. What's next? Number two, take whatever you can get. Okay, I've heard people say that now because of the current state of the industry and the economy, but that was true anytime. Even five years ago, my friends who had master's degrees in computer science, their first jobs were like $15 an hour. I mean, one of them didn't even get a full-time job, I think. It was like 30 or 35 hours a week. $15 an hour. Doesn't matter if it was five years ago or now, you take what you can get for that first job, even if it's no pay. Okay. So actually what I did before I got my job is I contacted a local business that I noticed didn't have a website and I was making their website for free, uh, which later turned into a more like barter thing where I received kind of free service and goods from the store. But you do that first job, low pay, maybe no pay, then that will be your first step into the tech industry. Then you can get that next job that has good pay. And then maybe six months, a year or two later, you get that next job after that that has the really good pay. If you can't get any kind of job or interview or internship you can't get anything like I was in then yeah start building websites for free for people who have a business and that brings me into point number three it's okay no one's here still no one's here you have to have something that sets you apart from the crowd and what that would be is a real project like what i talked about building a website for a business if you were like me with no cs degree no boot camp nothing then what do you have to show a potential hiring company other than your portfolio and your projects practice projects are not enough you need to show them that you built something from the ground up, finished it, and launched it onto the internet or the app store or whatever. I had two things like that. I had my portfolio website, which most people have, but it's important that you have a portfolio website with your own domain so that you can show the company that you know how to get a website 
out into production. Like you got a domain name, you're hosting it onto the website. Real people can come from anywhere around the world and look at your website. And the second thing I had was a Shopify store. And that showed that I'm comfortable with a CMS service and that I can actually build a real e-commerce store that actually gets real business. Like I've been running my own e-commerce store for a while now. So I think that was something a little bit unique. That brings me to point number four, Loom videos. I said I'm not a boot camp graduate and that's true. <laughs> but I did actually join a program called Freemote and it's kind of like a boot camp, but it's not really a traditional boot camp. So it's not the same as like having a cohort of students and you're working together on a team to build a project and you have like the teacher constantly giving you feedback. Freemote is more like it's a curriculum and it's just self-paced. You do it on your own. I mean, they have weekly Q&A live calls, but I could never do it because of the time difference. So basically I was on my own, but even if you do consider it a full-fledged boot camp, I didn't finish the curriculum. So still technically I'm not a boot camp grad. I was like 60% done with the curriculum when I got my job offer. In Freemote, they taught me how to use Loom videos to apply for freelance gigs on Upwork. And I took all of those teachings and I applied it to the interview process for my full-time job. I think this is the biggest thing that really set me apart. The company I work for now, they gave me a take-home coding project and I had about two weeks to do it, which by the way, I made that my full-time job basically for two weeks. It's just nonstop working on that every day. When I finished, when I finally solved that coding challenge take-home project, I made a Loom video explaining what I did, why I did everything. I kind of showed him my profile on that website and that I had done like over a hundred coding challenge on that challenges on that website and he was impressed with that. I'm like 99.9% .9 sure no one had ever submitted their source code along with a video explaining it like that and I think that was really the finishing touch and they invited me to interview and watched me try to solve a problem live in real time and then they offered me the job so that's basically how I got my job as a software engineer. I know the job hunt is a struggle. Uh, I was very desperate at the time that I got hired. I was feeling depressed, but you just got to keep on doing it. And eventually you'll find that one company that is a perfect fit for you. And they're willing to take a chance on you as a new developer. So just keep at it. If you guys want to know more about the process I went through to get to where I am, uh, let me know in the comments and I'll see you in the next video.